uh, some of y'all are still in a holding pattern. Yeah, I heard that. Some of y'all, God's already released you from that holding pattern. And that happened with Millie. She's been praying for her son, her son who's a professional man, educated with a lot of experience, lost his job more than two months ago. And um, nothing was happening, nothing was happening, nothing was happening. She received prayer last Sunday. That message really stirred her faith. She said that night, last Sunday night, her son called, Mom, I just got an offer. I just got a job. And she's just rejoicing over that. So give God the praise for that. Blessings on Pastor Jerry for that word and the worship in the service last Sunday in our absence. What a beautiful time you had. I got to join you via video. But I want to I talk about something today as we're moving into a mentality and an understanding, into an intentionality about what Christmas means. Every year we're stirred and reminded of, of the birth of our Savior and the significance of that and, and how significant in the birth announcement that came uh, from God when the heavens opened and, and, the, and, the, and the angels were heard declaring, they declared peace on earth, peace on earth and goodwill to men. As Jesus was taken up into heaven, that was what was upon his lips at the end of his earthly ministry. He was about to be caught up into heaven and Jesus left the same blessing that he was born with that the Father gave at his birth when he said, My peace I leave with you. When he rose from the dead and appeared for the first time to the disciples, this was on his lips, Peace be unto you. When Jesus would heal people, he would often say to them, Go in peace. Our salvation... Our faith is called in Scripture, more than once, it's called the way of peace. The gospel is called the gospel of peace. All of Israel and to this day greet one another with the word shalom, the peace of God be with you. The Apostle Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, he tells us that to be, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. He tells us a few chapters later, let us make every effort to do what leads to peace. Peace is also, of course, one of the fruits of the Spirit. Peace is one of them. The Apostle Paul describes the peace of God as a peace that transcends all understanding. And yet so few people today truly have peace. In the church. Well, I wanted to come and talk to you today about peace. There's a peace for you and a peace for me that was born as Jesus was born, initiating what what God Himself called a new and better covenant with people. He said, I'm going to write my laws on their hearts. No more tablets of stone. I'm going to change the heart. I'm going to take out the hardened hearts and put in hearts of flesh, tender to my voice and to my word. The new covenant. Do you know why there is peace for us today? Because God is a God of covenant. He's a God who does everything by covenant. The very essence of God, the very essence of His character is covenant. The first covenant God made was in Genesis chapter 6 with a man named Noah. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 11 he says, I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark and you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. Then we know the story. The floods came. The rain came. They were in the ark, protected with all of the species, living animals of the earth. And so a few chapters over in Genesis chapter 9, verse 9, God says again to Noah, Now I establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you 
And with the living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. And again, God says, and I love this phrase, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. God is a God of covenant. And He establishes, He establishes His covenant. When we're talking about covenant and we're talking about God, we're not talking about, well, so long as I hold up my end of it. God will hold up His end if I hold, let me tell you something, we're not capable of holding up our end. There's a whole lot of you don't have peace today because you're trying to hold up your end of the cup, which the covenant belongs to God. God established the covenant. He will keep the covenant. He will perform the words of the covenant. Once you enter into that covenant, which we enter in through the cross, through the blood of the Lamb, through salvation, through Jesus Christ, we enter into that new and better covenant with the Lord. God is a God who does everything by covenant. He never breaks His covenant. He's the keeper of covenant. He will establish His covenant with you forever once you enter into covenant with Him. He keeps His promises because He's a God of covenant. His words do not return to Him void because He's a God of covenant. He cannot lose sight of you ever because He's a God of covenant. He'll never leave you or forsake you because He's a God of covenant. He will never stop loving you because He's a God of covenant. He will never stop carrying you because He is a God of covenant. There is peace, true peace, for every one of us today because God is a God of covenant. God has made a covenant with us and He'll never break it. He's not just holding up his end of it. He's holding up the whole thing. Because it is not possible that we keep covenant. God is the keeper of covenant. He establishes his covenant of peace for every single one of us. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad it's not up to me. I'm so glad I don't have to hold up my end. There's no end for me to hold up. Let it go. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are trying to carry all this stuff. God, Jesus said, for I'll take that off of you. I will give you rest and I will, you will find rest and comfort and peace for your soul. He is the God of all peace because He is the God of covenant. Being confident of this thing, the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 1 verse 6, that he who began a good work in you, I love this phrase in the NIV, will carry it on to completion unto the day of Jesus Christ. He will carry the promises of his covenant that He has made to you and I, He will carry them and see them through all the way through unto the day of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad to know that God who began this thing in me, I didn't call myself, I didn't save myself, I didn't heal myself, I didn't forgive myself initially. God initiated those things out of covenant toward me. He offered those things toward me, and it was my part to receive it, to welcome it into my life. So I am so glad to know that God who began every good thing in your life, in my life, in this church, through the birth of Jesus Christ, will carry it all on unto completion. And folks, yeah, it's been 25 plus years, but we're not finished yet. God called us out here over 25 years ago from the, from the calling of the prophet Nehemiah, which says, let us rise up and build. And he strengthened their, our hands for the good work. And we built, we've been building, and we are going to continue to build as God enables us. He's not finished with us. He is a God of covenant. I want to read this from Hebrews chapter 10, starting in verse 14. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them. God initiated covenant. You do understand when God found Abraham, first of all, his name was not Abraham, it was Abram. 
And Abram, when God found Abram, was an idol-worshipping heathen. The father of our faith? That's exactly right. God chose Abram, and then he initiated his covenant with Abram and began to change Abram's heart so Abram could respond to him and walk with him. And he's the one the Bible says, God says of Abraham, he's the, he was the friend of God. He was the friend of God. God comes to me. He comes to you. If there's any good thing in your life, it's because God initiated it. God started it in you and He will finish it. Man, I love the rebuke the Apostle Paul gives to the Galatians church. Having begun in the Spirit as you did, what has happened that you think you're going to now continue or complete in the flesh? That that has been begun in us by the Spirit, only by the Spirit will those things be completed in us and finished in us. Because God is the initiator. It is because of covenant that He's made with us. He said, I'll make a, verse 16 again, this is the covenant. I'll put my laws in their hearts. I'll write them on their minds. Then He adds, look at this. Their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. Wow. And where there has been forgiven, where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence what in that, in the covenant of God, in the forgiveness and all, the, all of the good things that God has promised to us, to forgive our sins, to write His laws and His Word upon our heart. We have confidence in that. We can enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, open for us through the curtain, that is His body, since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us then be able to draw near. With a sincere heart, and with the full assurance that faith brings, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess for He who promised is faithful. <clears throat> Hallelujah. <clears throat> this is the confidence that we now have because He is faithful who has promised. Because He has given us access into the very throne room of heaven. He has given us access into His very presence. And I hope that somebody will leave here today understanding that peace is just, peace is just not something on call for you if you get in trouble. So many of us have reduced our God to an emergency call number. I, I, I don't know, maybe it's because we, we feel it to be so, something sensational that when we get in a crisis, we call out to God and He comes running to us. Maybe that's like Superman-ish kind of, Batman-ish kind of, you know, I mean, that so pervades our culture, doesn't it? The magnificent... How many are there? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, X-Men and this man, the men, and these, all these different superheroes that you call out in distress and God comes running. And you know what that does? It keeps God somewhere out there all the time versus in the hearts, in the hearts of those who believe upon Him. <clears throat> It's, peace is not just available if you happen to need it. Peace is supposed to be in here. I'm supposed to be filled with His peace every single day. Salvation doesn't just mean for me that God is available to me if I need to call on Him. <clears throat> and a lot of us live our lives like that. Oh, Father, be with my brother, be with my sister through this surgery. So just because you're about to have a surgery, you're going to invoke God to 
suddenly come. Well, where has he been all along? I, help me understand. I don't know. Oh, Lord, just protect me. Let your angels watch over me and protect me as I get on this airplane and fly to wherever. Don't you understand you're under the watchful, protective eye of God 24-7? We need to begin to understand He is in me. He is with me all the time. I don't just call on Him if I come upon a crisis or get myself in trouble again and He comes flying in like a superhero to save the day. Peace that transcends all understanding. He said, God's word says, I will give him perfect peace. I will fill him with perfect peace who sets his heart and his mind upon me. My friend, when you go into a surgery, you go into surgery with the peace of God already in your heart. You go into surgery with the angelic protection and the Spirit's protection and the shelter of Almighty God over your body. You don't just wait until you need a surgery to call upon Him to be with you. He is with you. <coughs> Rejoice in the Lord always. Well, I'm fine. I don't really... I don't really need to rejoice. Everything's going good. I don't really need to shout or... Praise or, you know, I'm, everything's all well. Seriously? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Let me tell you something. You better rejoice in the good times because the bad time's coming. And if you ain't learned how to praise God when things are going good, you are surely not going to praise Him when the crisis and all hell is unleashed against you in the crisis moment. You're going to fall apart, fall in the floor, call the pastor, call your mama, call somebody. Oh, pray that God will come. Again, that whole mentality that we just call out to God when we're in trouble in some way. The peace of God is in here. I've got a river of life on the inside of me. The issues of life are flowing on the inside of me. So when I'm going into a surgery, I don't just invoke God to be with me at the moment of a surgery. He's with me. He's going into the surgery with me. It didn't catch him off guard. He's with me. He's in me. His peace fills my heart and fills my life. Oh, Lord, just help me as I take this test. <laughs> my help and my hope is in the Lord. All the time. Well, let me, let, me, let me just break it down like this. You couldn't even get out of bed if God wasn't helping you. You couldn't have put your leg in the right side of your britches this morning if God hadn't been helping you. Let's just break it right down. You couldn't take another breath if God wasn't in you, giving you the breath of life every second. You couldn't pull up to the gas station later and put the card in the pump and pump your car full of gas if God wasn't your provider, Jehovah Jireh, providing for you every step of the way, even when you're not thinking about it. God is with you. God is providing for you. God has blessing for you. God has a window over your life that's open. God is ready to manifest himself in your life. See, he, that's why the peace of God transcends understanding. You are asking God for way too much. You ought to be thanking God for what He's already given you. Stop asking God for peace. You have peace. Hallelujah. Why do we ask God for provisions of the covenant if we're in covenant with Him? We're just thanking God. Like my wife just said a moment ago, Thanksgiving is over. Yeah, Thanksgiving, the holiday is over. But what she was saying was, Thanksgiving is never over. We're thanking God. We're grateful to God. Thank you for strength. Thank you for the peace of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost, that you're in my brother-in-law's body. You're in his life. Thank you for what you're going to do. Thank you that you're going to bring him through the 
surgery. Thank you because you're already there. We're not invoking God to come when the crisis hits. He was with you before you ever had a crisis. He's with you through the crisis and he's going to come out on the other side still with you. Hallelujah. Still with you. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't just invoke God when they felt the heat of the flames. They had a confidence. They knew their God. He was with them before they ever got arrested. And he was with them when they were thrown in. And he was still with them when they came back out alive. Hallelujah. He manifested in the fire because he wanted the heathens and the godless idol worshipers to see his presence. But he manifested because he was already with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knew their God. He was no 911 crisis, call out to me when you're in a crisis kind of God. He was not no superhero kind of fantasy God. They knew their God. Let's begin to thank God for the provisions of the covenant that are already for us each and every one. Stop asking Him for things He's already given you. Thank Him for it. You know what? There's a reason that we sing songs about healing, songs about Peace, songs about joy, songs about grief, songs about vision, songs about provision, songs about building, songs about forgiveness. Builds our faith. I believe you're my healer. You've been singing that for years and you, you're not sick. What did you ever think there might be a relation? Because you're singing about healing, the healer, the healer is on the inside of you. My friend, God will heal me today because he was a healer yesterday, he's a healer today, and he's a healer tomorrow. Well, no, I'm sorry, you used up your quota on healing. Let's see, I could give you, let me see what you got left. Let me see what's in your account. Oh, you're overdrawn there. Uh, the doctor said that you're going to die. I'm sorry, you, you've already used up all your healing credits. <laughs> what? You know how I know God will heal me today? Because God healed me yesterday. And He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the God who says, I am the Lord and I change not. King David said, Remember the Lord. I'm all off the page. Y'all just bear with me. I know it's Psalm 103 if you can get there real quick. Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Psalm 103 verse 1. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all of His benefits. He forgives all your sins. What? Wait, he forgave? No, 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 no. Present tense. He forgives. Yesterday he forgives. Today he forgives. Tomorrow he forgives. There is no he forgave. He forgave. No, he forgives. He is I am that I am. He is the ever, the ever present help in the moment and the time of need. Forget not all of his benefits. He forgives all of your sins, heals all of your diseases, redeems. You see that? You see that present tense on all these? Redeems your life from the pit, crowns you with love and compassion, satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, I'm so thankful God healed me five years ago. I'm so thankful He renewed past tense, me yesterday. I'm so thankful he, my friend, God is ever present in the moment all the time. And there's no way for you to use up your healing credits or your forgiveness credits or your peace credits. He is the God of all peace. Here's the key. Forget not. Forget not. How many times he said to Israel, remember, 
Remember how I brought you out of Egypt with a strong hand. He would tell every generation, remember how I brought you up. Remember how I restored you. Because what he was doing was stirring their faith for the crisis they were in now. If I did it once, if I did, well, God is the God of the second chance. You know why? Because he was the God of the first chance. Well, God is the God of the third chance. How? Because you knew him as the God of the second chance. God was the God of the hundredth chance. You know how you know him as the God of a hundred chance? Because you knew him as the God of the 99th chance. He is ever present to fill your life with peace every single day. Hallelujah. Forget not what he's done for you. Every time Israel had a breakthrough, every time God intervened supernaturally for them, they would stop and build a monument, stop and build a memorial. I did a whole sermon about that many, 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 many years ago. And he would require them to visit those monuments. Why were they there? So the next generation and the next generation could go and kneel at those altars and those monuments and remember what God did for us when we crossed over right here. What God did for us when we got over to this. What God did for us when we got victory in this fight. What God did for us when we had a breakthrough over there. What God did for me when he healed me five years ago. What God did for me, you got to go back and remember. Forget not all of his benefits. Remember, remember, remember. The promises of the covenant and the workings of God in your life throughout the years. He is ever present, ever present, ever present. My friend, there is no storm big enough to blow you out of the hand of God. There is no storm big enough. <clears throat> And the reason I can know his peace when I get in the storm is because I knew his peace before there ever was a storm. The only way I, I know is because, uh, what he'll do now is because uh, I, I didn't need healing yesterday, but I'm singing about healing. I'm thanking God for keeping me whole. I'm thanking God for that that promise of the covenant, that part of the covenant, because the day is going to come that I'm going to need to be healed, and it's going to come right up out of your spirit, because you've been feeding it and strengthening it through worship, through prayers, through thanksgiving, and one day when you need that, you're going to tap into that, it's just going to flow. It's going to flow right out to you. He's the peace in the storm. The Bible says God rides on the storm. The Bible says, uh, Job says God, uh, in, in the book of Job, God spoke to Job uh, out of the storm. The Bible says the Lord has his way in the storm. So you see, I have peace even in the storm because I had peace before the storm. He's filling me with his peace every day. He's filling me with his strength every day. He's filling me with his grace and his hope every single day. My peace I leave with you. Jesus said, my peace. Not the kind that people, no, no, no. Not what the world, no. My peace I leave with you, Jesus said. <clears throat> the peace the world gives is no match against the challenges of darkness. But his peace, on the other hand, will push back every challenge, every accusation, every storm, every attack. Do you not know? <clears throat> Have you not heard? Isaiah 40. The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow weary and tired and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Now I saw something, maybe it's just me. Maybe you've seen this for all the year, many years that many of you have read this passage of Scripture. But I saw something fresh, something jumped out at me about this. In verse 28, he will not grow tired or weary. And then in verse 31, those who hope in the Lord, they will not grow tired and weary. I, you see, he cannot grow tired and weary. And he lives on the inside of me. Therefore, I cannot and should not ever grow tired or weary. Because the God who cannot grow tired or weary lives on the inside of me. And I, therefore, do not have to ever grow tired or weary. Because of the God 
of all strength and the God who never tires and, and the God who never slumbers and the God who's ne- whose eye is never off of you. So when the God who does not grow tired lives inside of me, then I will not grow tired. When the God who does not grow faint lives inside of me, then I will not faint. When, when I put my hope and my confidence in His covenant, my strength is renewed every single day. He's filling me with peace every day by the power of the Holy Spirit. So when I face that crisis situation, I'm not just going to call upon God and wait for peace to come. Now that's how most of us live. That's how most of us live. Peace is already here. You know, all all that a crisis should do, all that a crisis should do is tap into His peace. Because again, I don't care what the crisis is or what they are, they are no match for the peace of God. For the peace of God that fills your heart and life. They're no match for that. You see, this peace I have, this peace that we have available to us, didn't come from the world. The world didn't give it to me and the world can't take it away. There was an old song like that. I don't remember how it goes, but I remember that phrase. (laughs) The world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. This joy that I have is not my own. It's the joy of the Lord. It belongs to Him. You understand salvation is not your own. It belongs to Him. It's a part of the covenant that He has initiated, that He has placed in our lives once we come into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So you see, you don't have to wait for sickness to come. To get healing, you should be getting healing every single day in the presence of the Lord. Depression should never come where the peace of God resides. Stop saying you trust the Lord. And you need Advil PMs every night. Hmm. Stop saying you know his peace and you're filled with fear. Stop serving a God that you have become, that you, that, that you have redefined as some superhero who's on call when you get in trouble. Start thanking God for what you've been asking him for. Because most of what you're asking him for, he has already provided freely to you and to me. Oh Lord, will you give me peace? No, no. Oh Lord, thank you for your peace in my life. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for keeping me healthy and whole. Thank you for your healing. You see, you declare healing over your life no matter what. Not just wait until there is sickness. You declare healing. You thank God for His healing provision. You thank God for that part of the covenant. Because let me tell you something. You will lose things you become unthankful for. I need to say that again. You will lose things you become unthankful for. Remember the faithfulness of God. Remember, rehearse every blessing, every good thing God has ever done in your life. And again, because I know God forgave me, I know He forgives me. Present, ever present. Because I know God restored me, He restores me. Just as sure as you needed to be saved, you still need saving. Just as sure as I needed to be healed, I still need healing. Let's forget not all of his benefits. Let's remember the faithfulness of our God. Let's reject the accusation, the lies of the enemy. Let's reject all attempts to get to uh, believe 
those lies and to get ourselves into fear. Because this is our God. Yesterday God said, I forgive you. Today God says, I forgive you. And tomorrow God will say, I forgive you. Yesterday God said, I redeem you. Today God says, I redeem you. Tomorrow he's going to say, I redeem you. Yesterday God said, I love you. Today God says, I love you. And tomorrow God will say, I love you. Never past tense with God. There's nothing in the covenant that is only for my past. God will never say, oh, I did that for you already. I'm not going to do that for you again. This building would be empty right now if that were true. <clears throat> he is our ever-present help. And I close with this from Isaiah chapter 46, verses 3 and 4. Listen to me, you descendants of Jacob, all of the remnant of the people of Israel, you whom I have upheld since your birth. I have carried you since you were born. Now we're children of Abraham. We're children of the promise. We're a part of this. Verse 4. Even to your old age and gray hairs, I am he, I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. I am He. I have upheld you since you were born. I have carried you since birth. I'm a God of covenant. I will carry you until the day I usher you and carry you into my very presence to be with me for all of eternity. God is saying whether you are young or old or anything and everything in between, He has sustained you and He will sustain you. He carried you and He does still carry you. He made you and He's still forming you. He will. He has rescued you before and He will continue to rescue you. There is peace. And it's time for some of us to begin to trust and put our confidence in the peace of God for our lives. Understand His peace is in me whether I'm in a crisis or not. I'm not just going to call upon His peace when I get in trouble. His peace is in me when I'm not in trouble. All trouble should do is, again, the trouble should tap into the peace. Because that trouble is no match for His peace. That's why Jesus said, my peace. Not like the world. Go, no, no, no. My peace I give to you. Don't even try to comprehend it. Don't even try to understand it. When you thought when, the, when your loved one died, you thought you would just fall apart and go into a corner and rock and just go into a depression. His peace came in the midst of sorrow and mourning because of the peace of God. So the Bible says that sorrow and mourning, they might come, but they will flee away because of the peace of of God shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Would you bow your heads today? There's some people in here and you have, you've been serving a God that you call out for peace if you need some peace or you call out for healing if you're sick or you call out for joy if you're upset. You call out for provision if you're, if you're struggling. He is, he is, he is ever present. He is ever present, ever present ever-present help. It's a beautiful, sweet thing, the peace of God. When we trust in that, we rest in that. And Christmas is the, I think, what do they say? Suicide rate, you know, is the highest ever at Christmas time. There's no peace in people's lives today. Folks, don't be in this room and not have peace today. Not understand He's the God of all peace. Jesus said, my peace I give you. Peace be unto you. Go in peace. In 
Jesus is being born and the announcement is given, peace on earth. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. Stand up all over the room. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hands. I don't want to make a liar out of anybody today. <laughs> I want us to do again as my wife led us earlier reach across the aisle make a, make a prayer chain connect with one another I'm going to pray the peace of God flood your heart and flood your mind the perfect peace of God flood your soul by Christ in and through and by Christ Jesus Father thank you for peace you're the God of all peace it's a provision of the covenant and you said I establish my covenant in you I write my covenant in you now Lord for somebody today in this room write peace in their heart write peace in the tablets of their heart right now peace right now peace peace right now where there's peace there cannot be depression where there's peace there cannot be anxiety where there's peace there cannot be fear where there's peace there cannot be mourning the peace of God fill your heart and mind and keep you in Christ Jesus from this day forward and father from this day forward I'm not asking you for peace again it's a provision of the covenant you've written your peace in my heart I will thank you every day for that peace thank you for your peace I'm grateful for your peace and every time I thank you every time I remember you every time I bow down at the altar at the memorial of peace my faith is strengthened my vision is renewed I am strengthened for the fight of today in the same way you gave me strength for the fight of yesterday you give me new strength for today thank you for peace Thank you for peace. Jesus came to give us peace. Inner peace, real peace, supernatural peace from the Father, from the Father of all, the Creator of all. Your peace, Lord, in this Christmas season, your peace. And Lord, if we're going to give anything, let us give your peace away. Let us give your peace away. Let us give your peace away. They don't need that, that TV, that whatever uh, more than they need peace they don't need that gift card if you will not nearly as much as they need the peace of God in their lives and so Lord when we understand that your peace fills our heart and our minds and protects and keeps us we can rest no more Advil PMs no more Ambien no more NyQuil just to get to sleep at night because the peace of God fills my heart and my mind. And that is my confidence that he that began a good work in me, he began the work of peace in me, shall finish it, shall establish it, shall carry me on to completion in Jesus Christ until the day of the Lord. And I thank you, Father. Thank you for peace in this Christmas season. Thank you, Jesus, the Savior, who is the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. He's come to fill us all with peace. And Lord, we receive peace. This is a church filled with your peace. We're a people who know your peace because we're a people of covenant. We're in covenant with you. Thank you for peace. 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 Like a river in my soul. Peace like a river. We thank you, Father. Can we bring that down? Let me see if I can lead you in this old school course right here. Got to get a key. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace 
like a river in my soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you.